This is Phil Jensen here, and I want to share with you the progression of a painting I recently finished, which I call Snack Time Again. Starting off, I'll go straight to the photos. I had taken several shots of this scene from several angles. I was struck by all the flying and flapping going on with all the excitement of the seagulls. And at first, the temptation was to add in a lot of birds from the several photos, as I got some really cool shots of them. But then I started thinking about just what the story is all about and how the composition would best serve the story. From this, I was able to leave out non-essential elements or adding more in. I chose this photograph, and even though the birds were pretty calm, I saw a pretty simple but effective connection between them and the man. Even elements like the upper part of the building or the water below had an interest, but they were really irrelevant to the story to present here. As a side note, those other gulls might be used for another painting so they can be saved in a folder called seals or whatever. I cropped the photo about like this for the canvas. Going straight onto the canvas, you can see that I simplified a lot with focus on the man and the gulls that fit the composition and the energy of the situation, of the interplay between them. I took out the closest gull from the photo as it had its back to me and wasn't particularly helpful to the composition. By the way, for this painting, I used my projector for the purpose of getting the elements on quickly. And in doing this, I draw directly with a brush, no pencil or charcoal. Instead, I chose a color that would be a significant and uniting color to uh, the whole painting. I mixed a fair amount of this medium toned background color to paint over the major part of the canvas. Now, just as in a recipe, where you hold some of the ingredients aside for later, this mixture I will come back to. As I begin to block this in, I saw that the railing didn't need to run off the canvas as it does in the photo, but it only needs to go just far enough to draw the eye to the two gulls perched upon it on the left as they're looking back to the man on the right. We know that this railing doesn't really disappear, but it can certainly do so for this composition. This background area provided both the negative space for the railing and for the birds, as well as for the wall, window, doors, and the man. With some darker umber and some blue, I filled in the spaces of the window and the doors to accentuate the focal point of the man and the gull with the gull on his head. It was here that I saw the importance of the light and shadows on the door frame behind the man and added the lighter tones here and around the window. I did notice some details through the door behind the man that might create some interest, but I knew that they had to be subtle or they would distract from the focus. The scene here is behind a restaurant, so the ketchup and mustard and the chair are enough to hint at here, keeping in mind that it's looking through glass and there's little distinction between objects inside and the reflection on the glass outside. At this stage, too, I roughed in shapes of shadows of the man's face, jacket, pants, and a little of the birds. Next, I wanted to bring in some of the detail of the railing to see how it would contribute to the whole. I also decided here that it was best to let the posts 
disappear rather than extend to the bottom of the canvas. Their presence is only a supporting role to the focus. I then fleshed out the, the railing and the posts a bit more, adding some warmth of the red. Now I bring in more definition to the posts, the shadow of the railing on the wall, and the man and his bird above, bringing in the unmistakable red jacket, which is visually dominating in the picture. I added a few subtle details around him, including the reflections in the glass and slightly more detail on the siding of the wall. Here is where that extra amount of background color helps to deepen and unite the background without having to remix and rematch the color for this purpose. I still left the two birds undone on the left until the end as they are also supporting characters in this play and I don't want to overpaint them. And here I worked in the final details. Bringing just enough color and detail to the sign above, I used the same red as in the jacket and in the last subtle additions to the railing detail. Remember that as the lettering of the sign is important for its own purpose, here it only needs to be approximated or suggested and not even the whole sign needs to be visible. The viewer's mind fills in the rest. Finishing the detail of the gull on his head, I also brought more depth and color to its shadow on the door frame and the details of the light across the man's pants. Lastly, I added just enough detail to the two gulls on the left, but not as much as the one stealing the show. Here again, I used some of the paint mixed up from the start to deepen and blend as necessary to bring it all together. Looking back, I might have deepened some of the shadows to accentuate the focal point, but I think it could easily have been overdone or overworked, and so I stopped short of that. I hope you got something out of this one that I think worked out quite well.